begin today with President Biden giving a speech on the economy this morning, laying out his administration's plan to fight surging inflation across the country. This comes as stocks try to regain some ground. The Dow has lost about 4,000 points since the start of the year. ABC News' is Kenneth Moten and ABC News financial contributor Alexis Christophorus joined me now for more on this. Uh, Kenneth, this speech seems less about announcing new actions and more about reminding people of what the administration has already put into place. Yeah, we're talking about messaging here for President Biden in the White House. The president acknowledged the impacts of inflation on Americans, saying, I know your pain. I feel your pain. I understand that you're going through a um, really tough time right now with the high cost of just about everything, especially when it comes to gas prices. And the pres president saying that this is his, quote, top domestic priority and essentially said, while I'm in charge and Democrats are in charge in Congress, this is not my fault here. There are global factors here at play. The president said there are a number of things his administration can do, including the Federal Reserve doing its job. And he laid out the differences between his plan and the plan from congressional Republicans. Uh, Kenneth, we also saw a more combative President Biden than usual this morning. Listen to just one moment from that speech. All of my plan is focused on lowering costs for the average family in America, to give them just a little bit of breathing room. Now, what's the congressional Republican plan? They don't want to solve inflation by lowering your costs. They want to solve it by raising your taxes and lowering your income. I happen to think it's a good thing when American families have a little more money in their pockets at the end of the month. But the Republicans in Congress don't seem to think so. Their plan has actually made working families, it's going to make working families poorer. You don't have to take my word for it. It's in writing. They've made their intentions perfectly clear. Kenneth, is this a change in strategy from the White House? And, and is this what we're going to see now heading into the midterms? The president is likely going to get pretty aggressive with showing the contrast between his plan and the Republican plans. <laughs> and even though he would point out, and he did point out, that he believes that the Republicans don't have a plan here at all, um, and saying that the Republicans have no plans to tackle rising energy costs, drug prices. Uh, Diane, it kind of reminds you of what was happening with the Affordable Care Act. Republicans worked for years to repeal and replace, um, but they only repealed elements of that individual mandate, like the individual mandate, and they never truly had a plan of their own. The president, as you um, heard there, kind of alluded to it and did later on aggressively attack Florida Senate. Senator Rick Scott's tax plan saying it's right there on paper that Scott wants to raise taxes for 75 million Americans is a plan that was even criticized by GOP Senate leader Mitch McConnell. The president calling the Republicans side of all of this the ultra MAGA plan, making that midterm pitch, you know, alluding to his uh, predecessor, former President Trump there, and the president giving the line, Diane, that American voters have heard for decades that Democrats want to help working families grow the middle class, while Republicans want to give tax breaks to corporations and help the rich get richer. Now, Alexis, Republicans did warn about inflation, but here we heard the president saying, one, that government spending has nothing to do with the rising prices that we're seeing now, and two, that Republicans don't have a better plan. What's your take on that? Well, I think he's not going to find a lot of support in terms of the government spending argument. I mean, he he and both the Trump administration had to have unprecedented amounts of spending to help pull us out of uh, the economic recession caused by the pandemic. The Biden administration alone spending $1.9 trillion as part of that rescue plan. That was definitely inflationary. All those stimulus checks, the amount of money we've all been sitting on because our savings got plumped up during the pandemic because we weren't going out spending. Well, now we're going out in a big way and spending. Spending, so demand is very high. Supply chain issues abound. Labor shortages abound. We have the war in Ukraine. All of the, those things together uh, pushing inflation higher. And the Biden administration doing what he can, which is not a whole lot, to help bring all of that down. You mentioned the Republicans. They have not endorsed their own policy document, so to speak, to bring down inflation. What they are doing is they're highlighting that a lot of Republican states are actually leading the economic recovery right now. So that's something they're pointing to. They would like to loosen uh, regulations on oil and gas producers. They also talk about cutting government spending. But again, they need their fellow lawmakers in Congress to do that. And right now we have such a divided Congress uh, with the midterm elections ahead of us. Uh, you know, you, 
hard to believe anything is going to get done between now and then. Right. And uh, I know the latest read on inflation showed gas prices up, food prices up, basically everything we spend money on every day. <laughs> uh, we're about to get a new read on inflation. What are you expecting there? Tomorrow, we're going to get the consumer price data, the consumer price index. We're hoping to see that inflation has peaked, meaning it, it didn't rise in April, but it didn't come down much either. We may just hang out here at this elevated level for the coming months. Uh, bottom line is inflation is going to remain high until something gives on the supply chain front or if we start to see the war in Ukraine wrap up, neither of which seem to be happening anytime soon. All right. Alexis Christophorus, Kenneth Moten, thank you both. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.